Section 2.6 Jointly Distributed Random Variables The objectives of this video are to calculate conditional probabilities, define independence of random variables, and define and compute the covariance and correlation between random variables. Let's start by looking into conditional distribution. In the discrete case, let's remember that if x and y are jointly discrete random variables with joint probability mass function p of x y and um, p of x denotes the marginal probability mass function of x and if x is any number for which p of x is bigger than zero the conditional probability mass function of y given x is given by p of y given x and is equal to the probability of the intersection of x and y divided by the probability of x and this is equal to the jointly probability distribution of x y divided by p of x so remember the jointly distribution is given by the intersection of variables x and y so for example if we want to compute the probability of being a female given that is left-handed so that probability is equal to the probability of the intersection of female and left-handed divided by the probability of left-handed so the probability of left-handed is the sum of this column and the intersection on, of female and left-handed is female and left-handed so replacing the values we have 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.15 which is equal to 0 0.3 now let's have a look to the conditional distribution for a continuous function so now x and y are jointly continuous random variables with joint probability density function now it's probability density function and f of x is the marginal probability density function of x so if x is any number for which uh, f of x is bigger than zero we have that the probability density function of y given x is equal to the joint distributed density function of x and y divided by f of x so remember when we have the two variables and some given domain in which the function is different from zero it could be the whole space and the variables are x and y and we are integrating with respect to y to obtain f of x for a given value this is better explained with an example let's consider again the washer example now the question is find the probability that the whole diameter y is less than or equal to 4.8 millimeters given that the thickness x is equal to 1.2 millimeters let's recall the three density functions f of x y the jointly distributed density function f of x and f of y the marginal distributions remember that the domain is for x in between 1 and 2 and y in between 4 and 5 now let's rewrite the equation in a more mathematical suitable form we want to find the probability of y being less than 4.8 given that x is equal to 1.2 to compute this probability we need to integrate the conditional density function of y given that x is equal to 1.2 in between minus infinity and 4.8 this conditional density function is equal to the intersection of x equal to 1.2 with y divided by f of x we replace x equal to 1.2 
in the equation for f of x y and we, re and we replace x equal to 1.2 in the equation for f of x so we obtain an equation in terms of y that we can now in replace in the integral so we have that the integral from minus infinity to 4.8 well we don't need to integrate from minus infinity given that the domain is constrained so we integrate in between 4 to 4.8 of the conditional function which is equal to 1.2 plus y divided by 5.7 dy and this equation is equal to 0 0.78 conditional expectation expectation is another term for mean a conditional expectation is an expectation or mean calculated using a conditional probability mass function or conditional probability density function the conditional expectation of y given that x is equal to some value is denoted by the expectation of y given that x is equal to x a given value or mu of y given that x is equal to a given value in the discrete form we write the expectation of y given that x is equal to x equal to the sum over n of y multiplied by the conditional probability of y given x in the continuous form the expectation of y given x equal to x is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of y multiplied by the, the condition density function of y given x dy let's look into an example now we want to find the conditional expectation of the whole diameter y given that the thickness x is equal to 1.2 in other words the expectation of y given that x is equal to 1.2 which is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of y multiplied by the conditional density function of y given that x is equal to 1.2 now the limits of the integral can be modified according to the size of the domain so the integral in between 4 to 5 of y uh, multiplied by the conditional density function which is equal to f of x y divided by f of x now x is equal to 1.2 in the jointly distributed function and x is equal to 1.2 in the density function for x and we integrate with respect to y now substituting the proper equations we have y multiplied by 1 6 of 1.2 plus y divided by 1 6 of 1.2 plus 9 over 2 dy and by solving this integral we'll find that this is equal to 4.51 independence for two random variables two random variables x and y are independent provided that if x and y are jointly discrete the, probabil the joint probability mass function is equal to the product of the marginals so that is the probability of x y is equal to the probability of x multiplied by the probability of y now if x and y are jointly continuous the joint probability density function is equal to the product of the marginals so that's it f of x y is equal to f of x multiplied by f of y independence for two random variables now if x and y are independent random variables then if x and y are jointly discrete and x is a value for which the probability of x is bigger than zero then the conditional probability of x given y is equal to p of x 
so that means it's independent of y now in the continuous case we have that the probability density function of x given y is going to be equal to the probability density function of x so it's independent of y covariance the covariance measures the relationship between two variables let x and y be random variables with means mu x and mu y the covariance of x and y is defined as the expected value of x minus mu x multiplied by y minus mu y the definition of covariance is very close to the definition of variance if we remember the definition of variance is for just one variable and is equal to the expected value of x minus mu x square now in the case of the covariance we have two variables x and y so the term inside is still quadratic because it's multiplying or at least second order because it's multiplying x times y now instead of measuring the distance only against one variable we are measuring the distance against two variables x and y so x minus mu x is the difference in between any point with respect to mu x now in this plot we have a set of points that are our population so for each single point we are measuring the distance with respect to the mean so for all these uh, points we are measuring the distance in x but also we are measuring the distance with respect to the mean in y so this is these are the terms in green and these are the terms in red so it gives an idea of how related are variable x and y there is an alternative formula for the covariance and that's the mean of x y minus the mean of x multiplied by the mean of y and the mean of x y is defined as x y multiplied by f of x y the x the y and the integrals are over the whole domain now let's have a look to the possible results of the covariance so in this case we can see there is a tendency of the points to be organized along this line so how the covariance can determine that it has some pattern if we look into the distance for one of the points so we have this distance and we have this distance with respect to the means for this particular point and most of the points are in this quadrant and in this quadrant so it happened the same thing with this and uh, this point now the distance for y is positive and the distance for x is positive so when we multiply we have a positive number now in this case the distance is negative but also the y distance is negative so when we multiply is positive so if we have a positive number the data is quite likely organized in a line how close to a line we'll see later so what we are saying is that the covariance of x y is bigger than zero in this case now if the data is organized along this axis so what we have is that most of the points that are in this quadrant are going to be negative because while this distance is positive this distance is negative so when we multiply this is going to be less than zero and uh, it will happen the same thing for the points in this quadrant so the x distance is positive but now the y distance is negative so if most of the points are along this direction what we have is that the covariance of x y is less than zero now what happens if the points are organized in such a way that uh, they are distributed in all quadrants well the positive points are going to cancel with the negative points so in this case the covariance of x y is close to zero 
Now, covariance give us an idea of um, the tendency of the data to be aligned in positive or negative line. However, it doesn't give any indication about the magnitude because the units of the covariance are the units of x multiplied by the units of y. So it's like quadratic units. So it's hard to draw practical conclusions. For that reason, it's better to convert this to a unitless or dimensionless term by the standard deviation of x and the standard deviation of y. So it's going to be dimensionless and uh, is going to be in minus 1 to 1. So the range of our new variable that is called the correlation is in between minus 1 and 1. Now with the correlation we can have more information. If the points are very close to a line the value is close to 1. So we can see that the tendency of this cloud of point is um, aligned but uh, they are not completely aligned. So the value of the correlation is 0 0.8. And as we move to 0, we can see that there is no correlation in between the points. Now, if we start to have negative values, the points start to correlate a line with a negative slope. Okay. The only thing is we are not sure about the slope. It could be either or could be this slope. Like for example, all these values are values for one so the only information that we have from the correlation is either a line or is not it doesn't tell us any other type of relationship like for example in those cases we can see that there is a relationship there is a pattern obviously there is a pattern here and in here but correlation is zero in all these cases so the only information that we can get from correlation is like how close to a linear relationship uh, we are none of these patterns is going to be identified with the correlation.